Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. Today, I am joined by my husband, Kurt. Uh, Kurt and I are both users of the symptothermal method of natural family planning, and we are both actually instructors as well. So if you're wondering why Kurt and I have quite a bit of knowledge on this subject, it's because we have spent quite a few hours uh, studying to become instructors in the symptothermal method, and so we have quite a bit of general knowledge over uh, NFP as a whole. So welcome, Kurt. Hello. Hey. So we are here to talk about NFP. What is it? What does it stand for? What does it do? Why does the church promote it? So what the heck is NFP? Um, NFP. So natural family planning. Mm -hmm. NFP. Um, NFP kind of has two parts to it. Uh, The fertility awareness part and then a discernment with your spouse and God over children. Okay, cool. So let's start with that fertility awareness part. What does fertility awareness mean? Um, There's a lot to fertility (laughs) awareness. Um, It's the use of biomarkers um, of a woman's cycle in order to basically find different phases in which she's possibly fertile or completely infertile or... All right, before we jump into that, I do want to mention the concept of shared fertility. Right. So basically, this boils down to humans are not asexual creatures. <laughs> um, a man by himself or a woman by herself cannot create life. They have to come together, uh, share in their fertility, and create that life. So um, a man is always fertile, um, and a woman is only sometimes fertile. Right. There is a cyclical nature to the women's menstrual cycle, and there's only a certain portion of time in that cycle that she is actually fertile. And specific hormones jump in to make it impossible to be fertile after ovulation hits, whereas in a man's cycle, the hormone levels are basically constant. And so if you're trying to avoid, it's important to abstain during those t- that possibly fertile time in the woman's menstrual cycle. But it is not just because the woman is fertile that you need to abstain. It's actually because you are both fertile at that time. Both husband and wife are fertile. And so if you're trying to avoid, you need to abstain together. So within a woman's menstrual cycle, there are three distinct phases. And these phases can vary in length depending on uh, the woman's cycle. But... The different phases have different levels of fertility and infertility on relative amounts. So phase one is what? The relatively infertile time. Relatively infertile. So this is the start from menses to phase two. (laughs) Phase one leads into phase two. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is relatively infertile. Uh, This Phase can be very short for some women. It can be a little bit longer for some women. Um, This is something that you would determine yourself on how long that phase is as you start charting and talking with your NFP instructor. So then phase two. The possibly fertile time. Possibly fertile time. So again, this is another phase that can vary in length uh, depending on uh, a woman's cycle. And during this possibly fertile time, this is sometime during this phase is when ovulation occurs. Which means you're going to be fertile. Right. So there's kind of two parts to that, right? The egg has left the building, so it's impossible to be fertilized after a certain point of time. But then in addition to that, there is a surge of progesterone, which makes it impossible for the female body to ovulate again after that 24 hour period of time. Now there are cases where there's a double ovulation, two eggs, uh, maybe one on each side, something like that. But that all happens within that 24 hour period of time. Once that time has passed and the progesterone has surged, it's impossible. Now this might come across as, wow, there's like a 24 hour period in which I could get pregnant, which (laughs) that's not, True. Uh, it's probably about a six-day window. 
Right. So technically it's about six days. Uh, sperm can live for three to five days in the perfect mucus environment. Uh, and then there's kind of the 24 hours of ovulation. Um, eventually the uh, egg will die, the sperm will die, and that period. So that six days is really the only amount of time. However, it is impossible to pinpoint those only those exact six days without daily ultrasounds to see if you've ovulated or not. Yeah, and basically what um, fertility awareness does is it retroactively, so after the fact, finds the days that you were possibly fertile. And once they're definitely over, we're in the third phase, completely infertile time. Oh boy. And this phase is usually about two weeks for a typical cycle. And again, there is some variation and fluctuation in this, but this period of time is actually one of the most standardized uh, periods of time, uh, standardized phases uh, within the three phases. Yes. And phase three goes until the onset of menses, and that begins the whole cycle again. So that portion, fertility awareness, um, you know, it's, it's a big part of NFP, but it's not all of it. Right. And there's another huge portion of NFP that is the discernment portion of it. What we mean by this discernment is the fertility awareness gives you these fantastic tools. It gives you these biomarkers to identify the different phases. Then you can use those tools to discuss with your spouse, uh, discern and pray on if it is time to try to conceive or try to avoid pregnancy. I mean, basically that will tell you when you should be abstaining. Right. And, you know, natural family planning is not going to tell you if it's time to have a kid or not. Right. That's that second part of discernment and prayer. I think you meant fertility awareness isn't going to tell you when to have a kid. That is. The discernment with God and your spouse um, is what's going to actually figure out, you know, are we done with two? Are we done with three? Are we done with three for now? And then, oh, two, three, six years later, oh my goodness, we want another one. Right. And that's the beauty of natural family planning, encompassing both the fertility awareness and that continual discernment. Um, it's a monthly process, right? Every month there is a possibly fertile time. Well, every cycle, it may not be exactly a month for, <laughs> for most women, actually, um, but so every cycle, there is that possibly fertile time, which requires some discussion and discernment, um, but it's continual. It's not, oh, I've hit 35 and I'm done. It's a process that you never have to make that blanket statement of my family is as big as it's going to be. Until you hit menopause. Right. Obviously, that's. God telling you this is how big your family is going to be. <laughs> At least your body. Yeah. Or your body, yeah. yeah. So why NFP and not birth control? Sex should be two things. Yeah. Unitive. And procreative. Ooh, unitive and procreative. So basically, birth control takes away one of those things. Right. And sometimes it takes away both of those things. That's depending true. on what uh, we're talking about. So let's... so talking hormonal birth control, that takes away the procreative part. And a friend of ours had such a great uh, visual for this. NFP versus birth control is kind of the difference between listening to your body and telling your body what to do. So when you're using hormonal birth control, you're saying, I'm going to control my fertility I am the one who knows what's best. I will do exactly only what I want to do. Whereas with natural family planning and being aware of your fertility, you are listening to your body and understanding the times when you could be fertile and the times when you are infertile and using those times uh, to come together as a married couple according to uh, if you're trying to conceive or trying to avoid pregnancy. Right. So basically, NFP, 
allows for those two things for sex to be unitive and procreative. Um, now, there are some people that talk about basically the use of any method, you know, of delaying pregnancy to be... Contraceptive in contra- nature. Yes. Right. So you're talking about the people who say, well, using NFP at all is like birth control. NFP is just Catholic birth control. Right. And that is not correct. Uh, It's completely wrong. Yeah, so if we look at contraceptive, contra, against, and septive, like conception, um, you know, against conception. And NFP does nothing to stop conception other than waiting for a woman to not be fertile. So what NFP allows us to do is use the god-given design of our shared fertility and the biomarkers that are available for us to recognize and observe to figure out when we need to abstain if we are trying to avoid pregnancy. So it's not Catholic birth control. Nope. (laughs) Not even close. However, one of the things that comes up is someone may look at a couple using natural family planning and say, oh, they're using it in a contraceptive manner, which we already kind of stated it's not really possible to use it in a contraceptive manner. But what they're trying to say is, oh, they're using natural family planning uh, because they just don't want more kids. The thing is, we can't say that about anybody except ourselves. We cannot look at another couple using natural family planning and saying they're just using NFP incorrectly. No, that's like saying, oh, that person over there uh, praying in the church, they're not praying right. Yeah, and I mean, like, looking into another person's marriage and being like, wow, if I was in their shoes, I could have more kids than they do. Cool. Great. You just made the statement that you could. You're not them. (laughs) Right. You don't know what's going on in their marriage. You don't know what's going on in their finances. They may look picture perfect from the outside, and we all try to do that. We try to make ourselves look perfect on the outside so that everybody looking in thinks we have this beautiful life and this perfect family and perfect life. Um, But all of us are broken inside. All of us have things going on. And so... To try to say that someone is using NFP incorrectly, uh, it's very hurtful. Right. And in Humana Vitae, they talk about, like, you must have a grave reason. Grave grave reason. Grave reason for... For putting off a pregnancy. Putting off a pregnancy. And what they're really saying there is just a, a grave reason for you. Right. And there's a reason why there isn't just a list of, here's what a grave reason would be. Like, you need to have X amount of money in the bank, and if you don't have that much money, then you have a grave reason to avoid a pregnancy. We don't have a list because that grave reason, that that reason for avoiding a pregnancy is different from couple to couple. Right. It's between you, your spouse, and God. All right. So I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. I I mean, he's fine over there. He's (laughs) he's got some peanuts and water. Uh, Nobody cares about him. He's fine. He's fine. Don't don't look over there. Abstinence. No, 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 no. Don't look at that. (laughs) Okay. So with the natural family planning, there are periods of abstinence. (gasps) Oh my gosh. And here's what we want to say on these periods of abstinence. Yeah, they aren't easy. Yeah, nobody loves them. But God gives us crosses to bear. And he gives us, each of us individually, crosses that we can bear. And abstinence is one of those crosses. Yeah, and I mean, also, like... A lot of NFP speakers talk about how the abstinence period is a time that you learn to love your spouse in a different way. And, you know, that's kind of all they focus on. We don't want to put on our rose-colored glasses, as my (laughs) wife likes to say. 
it it's difficult, but it is a time that we can grow and learn to love our spouse in a way that isn't just sexual intimacy. Right. It's important in a marriage for the intimacy between a husband and wife to not just be sexual. And so the periods of abstinence force us to communicate on deeper levels as well as learn new ways to show our spouse that we love them. Like, um, you, Kurt, can do the dishes for me because I hate doing the dishes. Um, I can take care of Emma and take out the trash. And it's also a great time to explore your own personal individual uh, hobbies and activities as well. And that's something that you can bring back to your spouse of something that you learned or somewhere that you grew. Yeah, and that's not saying that like, oh, we're not having sex, so I'm just not going to talk to you for this amount of time at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let, let's move on from that. Yeah. So, natural family planning. Does it even work? Why, yes, Ellen, it does. <laughs> it is as effective or better than other contraceptive methods. That is true. Um, natural family planning isn't easy by any means. And a lot of times when natural family planning, quote, doesn't work, it's because a couple decided we just won't follow one of the rules and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I mean, I think it also got a bad rep from the calendar rhythm method being quote-unquote NFP, which it's not. And, I mean, if you look at it, it, the calendar rhythm method is off of a, what, how many? Like a 28-day cycle. Which is not... No. Well, and a 28-day cycle is average. Now, there is a wide range of normal... Um, it just really doesn't work. It's not a method of natural family planning. And actually, in fact, it's not recognized by the USCCB as a method of natural family planning. Right. So when you say NFP, we're not talking calendar rhythm. Not at all. All right. Thank you, Kurt, for joining me and talking through just kind of what the heck is NFP Thanks for listening to Charting Toward Intimacy. A lot of the topics that Kurt and I discussed in this episode, we either have already or plan to record episodes with a deeper dive into those. This was just hopefully a little introduction to natural family planning if you have never heard the term before. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to stay updated on upcoming episodes. 